Hey friends, Dylan Bates here, the Final Cut Bro. Today we are going to be taking a look at using motion to create on-screen controls for custom plugins in Final Cut Pro. Let's go. So today we're just going to be working within a Final Cut generator, but you can work with whatever you want. We're going to just add a rectangle shape to the center, and this will show us the scale and rotation and all that stuff. So go ahead and just shift click and create your rectangle here. And we can jump into the inspector, go to our properties, and we just want to zero that out so it's dead center. Let's go ahead and rename this to the object group just for the easiness sake. The next thing we're going to want to do is jump into our library and go down to generators and actually add a color solid. So this blue solid here is going to be our controller group. Now it will be invisible so we can disable it. We'll rename it to controller and I might even rename this color solid to controller base or something like that. With this controller base, I'll re-enable it just so you can see. We're going to add a filter and that filter will be distortion and twirl. Now the reason I have chosen twirl is because twirl has three different components that we can adjust as an on-screen controller. So we can adjust the amount here, which will apply to our scale. We can adjust the position and we can also adjust the rotation. We are going to disable the view of this controller and the twirl effect is going to actually be what is controlling and pushing around our object here. So let's go ahead and rename this twirl to location, rotation, and scale. What we will want to do is link these individual parameters into our rectangle. It should be noted that you cannot publish on-screen controls from this rectangle into Final Cut Pro. So this is just a weird workaround that you have to deal with if you want to create your own plugins. But I will try and make it as easy to understand as possible. So to affect this rect rectangle in our location, rotation, scale, we are going to be using a parameter behavior called link. The first thing we want to do is have this affect our position of our cube. So go on up to your position panel here, select that, make sure you select the rectangle and not the group. We want the rectangle object and go into the position. We're going to have to do this for the X and Y position factors. So find your X factor, click on this down arrow and go to add parameter behavior link. Now we're going to drag this controller base into our linked object. Now we will see it automatically has linked the controller base as a whole to that object, but we actually want to link the on-screen controls here because those will be visible within Final Cut. So we are going to select our link here. We're going to rename this to position X and we are going to come to our compatible parameters here in the source parameter and we will go down to filters, location, rotation, scale, and go to center. And the center is going to be affected by our object there. So now we can see that it's working perfectly. We will reset the offset here in just a bit, but for now, this is looking great. Let's go ahead and duplicate this position by doing command D. And we're just going to change the compatible parameter behaviors, the center over to Y and have that affect the properties transform position Y. So now this is going to be affecting wherever this cube is in the X and Y direction and it's perfectly linked. Well, not perfectly. We'll fix the, the weird offset here in just a second. So we'll just rename this to be position Y. Okay, so now we want to fix this offset problem. Go ahead and select your position X and we're gonna go to the apply mode, set that to replace, oh wait, no, we wanna set that to add to source and we will do the same with the other box there as well. Now nothing has changed, so go back to your rectangle and now to fix this, we're just gonna drag our cube or square I should say, whatever it is, back into the center and now you will see that it works perfectly. The adding to source, so rather than replacing the source's position, it's actually just working with it, which is very nice. And that makes it so we can very easily, say we want to offset this, we can very easily offset it, no problem. Okay, let's get into the scale factor. I'm going to set this amount to actually 0.1 and that is so that the uh, this circle isn't absolutely massive. Go ahead and find your rectangle and we are going to find the scale factor here and we will select the X factor 
add parameter behavior link and we can link this to scale x drag our controller base in jump into your compatible parameters filters location rotation scale and amount and now the amount on the location here on the x factor is going to affect our cube and we will fix the offset here in just a bit let's go ahead and duplicate that command d we can actually leave this as the amount and we will set this to the apply to the properties transform scale and y so now if we look at it it is a square still but it is very tiny so let's go ahead rename this and let's set our offsets so remember how i set the amount here to 0.1 well if i set this to one it would be full scale but that makes our controller way, way too large. So let's go ahead, set this back to 0.1, go into our scale factor, and we will set the scale here to actually be nine. And we will do the same thing with the other scale factor. And now we have this small controller, but it's linked perfectly to the size of our cube. Okay, so the last thing we wanna do is add the rotation in. So let's go ahead and select our rectangle we will find our rotation factor here. And we wanna rotate this on the Z axis because the other axis will give us this kind of 3D thing. So you could use that for something else, but for today we're doing the Z. Add parameter behavior, link, drag our controller base into that. And we will link the filters, location, rotation, scale to twirl. Now, I actually wanna set this to 90 degrees um, because I like to have this line sticking straight up. Now you'll notice that as I rotate this right now, for every full turn, it's only turning 90 degrees. So we are gonna have to offset that. Go into our rotation and we'll just set this as rot. In our rotation factor here, we are going to set the scale to four and that is because four times 90 is 360. So now when we rotate this a full 90 degrees, it will go 90 degrees. So it'll be perfectly linked up. If you are working with an object that has patterns or something, you might wanna set your twirl offset to negative 90 because we set the offset before to 90 degrees. So hopefully that makes sense. But now our square should be perfectly linked up. We now have this uh, perfect control group for our square. We could easily go into the shape uh, style and set the fill color to whatever we want. We could disable the outline. Um, and then we could actually publish all these parameters by going to our fill color, publish, and, uh, and then we also want to jump into our location, rotation, scale, publish on screen controls. And now if we push command S, we can call this square control or whatever you want to call it. You now can publish this into Final Cut Pro. And now that we have Final Cut Pro open, we can jump into our generators and find our new generator FCB here. And there is the square controller right here. So we can actually affect it by moving it around directly in our browser. We can scale it up, scale down, rotate, and it's super handy. Now I just want to show you an example of what something like this might be useful for if you're creating your own plugins. So if I jump into the logo template that I've created here, this was kind of originally where I was taking my tutorial, but it was just getting too long and complicated. So I might have to address it at another time. So I've got my logo here and it's got this text here and we can rechange this text to say whatever we want and it will just automatically link up with our object here. We can also rotate everything very easily and we can scale it up or scale down. And you'll notice it's this ugly vomit green color. So we could actually change this and the text color I used a link parameter. The text color is going to actually match the color of my logo. So it's just a really easy way to uh, to set that up. Hopefully that can shed a little bit of light onto why something like this would be really helpful, um, especially if you're creating plugins. So I have some plans for some um, more powerful shapes, plugins and stuff that have these special controls. So keep an eye out for those. So hopefully that was helpful to you at least in some way or another. I know it's kind of a long and dull tutorial, but I'm not really trying to, you know, have uh, beat the algorithm as far as 
I'm like, I'm not trying to come up with the most popular subjects. I'm trying to get into the nitty gritty and more advanced subject matter. It's probably not going to get very many views on YouTube, but that's okay as long as it's useful to some of you. So thank you so much for watching. I seriously do appreciate it. And if you want to see more advanced tutorials just like this one uh, for both Motion and Final Cut Pro, then make sure you subscribe because I've got so much more planned. Thank you so much and I will see you next week.